Hashtag canceled. Identity <laughs> crisis. I am so decked out right now. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm MK Fade. And I'm Sasha White. And this, this is Identity, Identity crisis. crisis. Summer vacation edition. Getting drunk edition. <laughs> Don't and try this at home. important kid. announcements edition. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, first of all, what are we drinking? MK, we have obviously some red wine. Right. Like, juice. what is it? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Whatever the fuck was cheapest at Whole Foods. It's probably the Josh Merlot, I think, if I remember. Oh. It's like literally just the, the Josh brand is always vegan. Shout out to this is not an advertisement. But Wait, like, is some wine not vegan? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They run it through it fish really? bladders. It's super gross. What? Are you serious? They yeah. run wine through fish bladders? Yeah, it's bladders? disgusting. It's like an old purification technique or something i don't really totally even know what it was for it's more common in white wine than in reds so like oh, no. most white like wine is white not wine. vegan unless it explicitly like is but then some red oh, wine is like hit or miss blushes are obviously hit or miss but uh reds are normally safe but there's a couple just like common drugstore brand wines that are pretty vegan because it's actually more like the fancier the wine is the less likely it is to be vegan because they use like the old techniques oh my um, god that's sick yeah. and disgusting yeah but a lot of your like 12 dollars drugstore wines are usually vegan not all oh, well okay. not usually it's wow. easy enough to find one yeah how do they keep that a secret that is like wine's <laughs> best kept secret that they fucking yeah. run it through a fish platter that's because sick. it's gross like that's nobody disgusting. wants to know that, is, that. yeah why just why okay now what gross thing do they do to tequila because that's what i'm drinking nothing that i know of tequila is always vegan thank god okay. i know and I'm not vegan to not misrepresent myself, but I am a vegetarian and I don't want wine through fish bladders no matter what. No, not so much. <laughs> Should we tell people why we're summer party mode? Yeah, we need to tell them. Okay. All right, serious so, conversation. Time. Serious conversation. <laughs> the thing is, the announcement is that season one of Identity Crisis has come to an end with 22 episodes we are pretty proud of what we've done and we're going to go on a summer break summer hiatus we are, we are taking a summer vacation <laughs> folks we desperately need it um but it's been really amazing this has been so much fun and i'm really excited to see what happens next me too especially since we're talking about expanding out of just talking about gender critical we are in this niche because of many reasons which you know and we we got bullied into this niche yeah or did we rebel into this niche because we were we like oh we can't say that fuck you we're gonna say it <laughs> we so got dry sand affected into the niche wait what is that again remind me what's the stress oh sand yeah effect? so the stray sand effect it's like when you try to cancel something but just like the news of the cancellation makes people want to see it even more mm. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. We definitely have had a bit of that and we need more of that, by the way. So if anyone out there wants to cancel us, please cancel us, deplatform mm -hmm. us, attack us. Oh my God. I would be it. happy to do it. an interview for your hit piece. Yeah. We, we crave it. We need it. So please reach out to us or just write the hit piece, whatever you want to do. Just make sure we see it. Um, and yes. Yeah, so when we come back from hiatus, we are going to be expanding with, it's going to be sort of a new a new show. It's still going to be called Identity Crisis and we're still going to be, you know, same format, but different topics. So that yeah. will be, I'm really excited for that. We have a lot of other stuff we want to discuss. We, we both have other interests and that we're very passionate about. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> it's just a turf. Yeah, I'm we're not just. It's a multifaceted turf. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, yeah, we're multidimensional turf. So we have other mm. stuff we want to talk about. Plebity originally wasn't founded to be a GC organization. And so we have a lot of other things. We want to talk about a lot of serious issues and um, we're going to keep on going with that. We're obviously going to probably mention a lot of TRA nonsense from time to time. I'm not going to be yeah. able to help it. I, I do yeah. feel like the gender stuff is often like the peak of this culture war thing in general. Oh, and yeah. it often is just like the easiest thing to point to and be like, look at this nonsense that's happening within the subculture. <laughs> and um, it's obviously also something that we're both interested in enough to, you know, get our whole careers ruined over it and then build new ones centered around it. Yes. But, but I, I think that it would be interesting to sort of branch out outside of that. And, you know, we haven't really come up with our plan yet 
for what the the next episodes after our summer break are going to be. So there's still lots of sort of questions up in the air there. So if you have ideas of other things that you would like to see us talk about, we would be very interested in hearing them. And especially if you know if you think that there's something that's like sort of tangential to the gender identity debate, but maybe like we haven't really dug into it on the show because it felt a little too off topic. Like we're going a little off topic now. So yes. feel free to send us those suggestions. Also, I was going to say, if you want to get these merch items, these are on the 4w.pub shop. So this hat, which just came in from MK, which I fucking love, and it's identity crisis hat, and it's a little bit um, distressed. And then this shirt, hashtag canceled. So you can get these on 4w. So check them out. So cute. You look so cute, Sasha. I love this hat. Like no, I'm really gonna have to get me. myself one. Like mm -hmm. I, I already have like so many hats from my own store. It's ridiculous. Like I've got this other one. My yeah. my four W snapback. I've got like pins on my hair, so it's kind of hard to wear right okay. now. But like yeah. I have so many hats from this store. Another reason that we're gonna be on break this summer is because I'm gonna be doing a lot of traveling. I'm actually gonna be at the Michigan Family Reunion. If any of you are going, I hope to see you there. I know we're gonna have like little spinster meetups and like the Wolf Crew is gonna have a meetup. If you're in any of those communities, I hope to see you there. I might also be making a trip to some other places in the United States. And, you know, we might also have a surprise for you later on in the summer, a surprise episode. So definitely stay tuned. Don't like drop this from your feed because we might be sneaking in with a couple updates here and there. Just going to relive or go over some of our past episodes and just talk about our greatest hits and say, oh, like, what were we thinking when we did that a little inside info? Yes. A retrospective okay. on season a retrospective. one. Retrospective. Yeah, exactly. Our very first episode was What Made You Peak Trans. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that one? This is when I gave my three axioms of what I believe in trans. Oh, that's right. Those were so yeah. good. That was, I think, a really important thing for a lot of people to hear. And I think you did such a good job explaining it. And I, Let's I think see that was if a we great still episode. agree. Let's see if we still, what we think of the axioms, like if I can okay. remember them. It was, um, for one thing, oh, it, it, number one, all people, including trans people, deserve respect, dignity, human rights, lives free of discrimination, abuse. And then number two is human beings cannot change their sex. A man cannot become a woman. Mm -hmm. And number three is that all the issues Everything that follow from that, it, we must discuss. Like, you can't shut down the discussions. You have to engage in them. Um, it's unfortunate that we have to engage with them because actually some of them shouldn't really, from our perspective, it's like it shouldn't be a debate, but we have yeah. to. But if we can agree to those first two axioms, we win all of the debates. Right. Easily. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess I still pretty much agree with that. I, I do think as far as like what must be up for a debate versus like what we should a lot, like, I think there's maybe a difference between what we what is worth actually us spending our time debating yes. versus, you know, yes. what like technically legally people have a right to debate. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I still pretty much agree with that. I, I do think that it's important to, you know, sometimes start with the basic understanding of human rights and then a basic understanding of science and then go from there. Uh, we already know, though, that this is just not the same framework that the people that we're debating are following. Um, yeah. They go, their, their three axioms are the same first one. Trans people deserve everything I said. The, the opposite of the second one, that you can change your sex. Yeah. And, that, and then the opposite of the third one, that we're not allowed to debate anything that follows from that. So yeah. those would be sort of mirrored. But yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. Like we shouldn't debate all these little nitty gritty things necessarily. But, um, but unfortunately they've been opened up. Like for example, why should we even debate that women should have their own sports? That was kind of already settled prior to this. And then now we have to make these arguments again. It's, it's very right. annoying. Right. <laughs> Yeah, or why, why should we debate letting male rapists and abusers in women's oh my prisons? God. Like, it's nuts to me that this yeah. is a debate in the first place, but I'm still not going to be the one who says you're not allowed to have that debate. Like, I will mm -hmm. have that debate with you and think and it's... Win. <laughs> well, I, I like to think that I win on the arguments, but that doesn't necessarily mean I, like, get what I want. <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing. Exactly. Because yeah. that's not how yeah. the world works. I know. So... 
Okay, anything else you want to comment on in that first video? It's so crazy looking back at these old episodes and just how different <laughs> it looks. I know, our lighting. The lighting. Our, oh my I got gosh, a new mic so after, the, after a couple yeah. episodes. You got uh, a new mic and a new camera both. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And then and we switched to the like more side by side rather than like the yeah. more widescreen view. And I think we look so much better now. I feel like we were babies we back then. And it's crazy. I know. This is like six months ago. What blows my mind is exactly that, that we look younger. Yes. Somehow our faces look years younger. But it was yeah. like, what was it? it? Was This was in January. This was six months ago. It was six months ago. So how is it that we look so much younger? Like, the that show is has weird. aged me. Yeah. <laughs> like this whole thing is aged. These right? gray hairs right here. Yeah. That's funny. we're just more mature now. That's the, I hope so. We've just matured. I do notice too. my posture was bad and I was slouching. All yeah, right. Oh, we also got better with like our setups a little bit. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Our little designs behind us. Although yeah. my orchids died. If anyone's watching behind <laughs> me, they died. Okay. Episode two was preferred pronouns. Oh, we, I remember we talked a lot about how you can't compel people's speech and you shouldn't compel people's speech. Obviously, still think that no matter who yeah. you are, don't compel it's people's speech. It's crazy that this still continues to be a debate. And I mean, we each have our own opinion on it, which is different. And we managed to get along and communicate, yeah, I think, exactly. perfectly fine. And yeah. what honestly kills me is I don't mind, like, the broader debate in society about this. What kills me is the infighting that's still happening on this issue and how, like, you're not a good enough rad time if you do this mm -hmm. or how you're, like, a toxic, like, too much rad time if you do that or, like, what are the other – or GC, whatever your thing is. I think this comes back to some of the label stuff that we've talked about on a different episode um but you know i wish people would just say what they want to say and like not censor themselves and not censor others but what do agreed. i know completely agreed and then <laughs> episode three actually took an interesting turn when we ended up having a debate about porn yes do you remember when i started crying in the middle of this episode and then we stopped filming and then i like mm -hmm. had a mental breakdown and then we like became best friends and then we restarted yeah. the filming again People didn't yeah, know all that. Yeah, it was kind of like that. Yeah, that, there you go. A little background. I mean, it was it. The conversation pushed your buttons, and we yeah, didn't expect did. for that to happen. Yeah, it and, got like, um, personal. I mean, not like yeah, person, not like personal uh, insults, but like I started talking about something on this episode that I wasn't planning to talk about, like personal trauma stuff, and then I feel like what actually. You know, kind of in hindsight, part of me wishes that we actually put that whole breakdown mm -hmm. on the show. I'm glad that we don't, but I think that what would have been cool is for someone to actually see the whole nitty gritty of like, sometimes when you have hard conversations, like you do have emotional reactions and that doesn't need to be used to like further a divide. And like, you don't yeah. need to use your trauma to be like, my trauma means I'm right. Mm -hmm. And like, and to further the divide between the person that you're speaking to, it actually brought us a lot closer together. I feel like this was actually kind of a turning point in our friendship. It was, it was because we made it through that, that made us really strong and that made us yeah. trust each other. And Absolutely. it's funny because like thinking back on that, we really ended up having such a small point of disagreement. Like yeah. we both agree that porn is dehumanizing and this disgusting, despicable industry of human rights abuses. And it's, teaching the dehumanization of women so i'm still completely against it i was taking the other side i was like well you know just representations of sex aren't necessarily bad i was kind of dabbling in like the libertarianism which was just you know part of my like whole arc of this whole thing being canceled i started questioning everything i was thinking For, to this point i've kind of ended up now on the same side where i'm like very anti-porn still so yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was a good one. I think people really enjoyed that because they saw two people have a healthy debate mm -hmm. that ended up like not in people hating each other, but in actually feeling exactly. like we understood each other better. Exactly. It was a turning point and we did become closer after that. It was like, yeah. if we can get through this, we will be tight. And then we did. And that was wonderful. We were. Now we're best friends. So I have know. fights with your friends. It's great. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> like as soon as possible. It's true. <laughs> ASAP. Like go pick fights as right now. <laughs> Go pick a fight and see how they react and see how it goes. Um, I think this just shows like there are certain types of people who like 
are friends that are this sort of brings us back to like the better friends thing that we've talked about a lot that like Artie Morty said on the episode that when we yeah. went on with them over at uh, the mess we're in with Graham and mm -hmm. Helen and he said that the better friends portion of your life and I think that we kind of just proved in that episode that we were in the better friends portion and I hope I that everyone that. gets to a better friends portion of life eventually and then episode four was one of my favorites group think and preference falsification yes when we, we did went a all great psychology job on that. On it. Yeah, that was real. Yeah. Oh, you know, I ended up buying the guy's book, but I haven't read it, so it's not that impressive. Um, I ended up buying the book from the professor that we wow, yeah. that we discussed, um, Tim or Curran, or or Curran, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Tim or Curran. Nice. And it's good so far. I've read like three pages. I plan to read this, but um, it's called Private Lies, Public. Uh, private truths public lies the social consequences of preference falsification mm -hmm. and it's very relevant and what's cool is that he talks about not just regimes like Soviet Union or um, Maoist China but also the U.S. and the ways that this is sort of like subtly happening here as well. Yeah, that this was definitely one of my favorites as well. I feel like I learned so much in the research leading up to this episode, especially. And I feel like it really gives you a framework to start to understand some of what you see happen around you, at, like not just gender identity and all sorts of other ways. And uh, this was one of the episodes where I got to put my expensive ass degree to use. And then the next episode was Have You Lost Friends for Being Gender Critical? I just mentioned that. Yep, that was classic. Classic one. <laughs> classic. And then the next one was so much fun reacting to woke Instagram. This stuff was crazy. Like some yeah. of the things that were said on this was just absolutely nuts. And every so often, like I go back and look at some of these like, was woke Instagram accounts and it's just like, it's so bad. Did, did you see that, uh, that TikTok that's going around about that white lady braiding her child for being white? Was it a little baby? Yeah. And she's saying, I'm not going to raise him to be a toxic male. Why, why no, male? no it was a five-year-old who was like, have, she oh. was like crying or something. And the mom was like, uh, none of your white woman tears here. That won't work. And then oh, her the brother, fuck? who was like 11 or something, tried to help her. I actually haven't even watched this. I've just like seen enough about it on the internet today. It's been stupid. Um, this is what happens. But then her little brother tried to like comfort the sister who's crying and the mom is like no 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 we don't reward that white woman tears behavior what is wrong with these people that's oh, disgusting yeah. it was basically child abuse tbh yeah but this was like this sort of thing yeah exactly yes so i just typed them in because i was like what have they been doing lately so you want to talk about which is the one we crucified and they have 2.8 million followers oh my god so they have something recently called understanding non-monogamy i'm just curious i just want to click on it so they say generally speaking not monogamous relationships involve having more than one partner helpful terms compersion the emotional or bodily experience of happiness or joy when a partner engages in additional sexual emotional or, so, or romantic it's called a fetish. so basically when you get cucked that's yeah. what yeah. that's what like, that I have is. a cuck fetish. Like what? That's what this is. They're just oh, normalizing a cuck fetish. God. I hate this. I had in my like friends group circle that I used to be in before I was kicked out of it. it polyamory was super common and i wrote this article like ages ago it's probably still back on 4w if you want to dig through the archives called uh all my friends are poly and it's like an examination <laughs> of that. like I'm gonna link my, that below. Yeah, should, it. yeah it's a throwback <laughs> and um it's like an examination of what i see in these relationships and god it, i feel like it's literally just oh you found a way to try to make basically every male's sexual fantasy somehow seem woke Good. Good for you. All right. And then we did episode seven, one trick to effectively debate gender identity ideologues. This episode was fucking awesome. I felt like I got a lesson in argumentation from MK. <laughs> it was really cool. Seriously, because we didn't plan the episode to be the way it came out in the end, which was that we did we did two model conversations, a fail and a win. And we didn't even intend to do it like that. It was just that the first one was a fail. And then MK was like, okay, try this. Try sitting back and not 
aggressing your arguments, but just asking questions and just poking little holes in the opponent's argument. And that worked like a charm. You have to watch that video because yeah. that is, it, it's like a, it's like a masterclass in how to have these discussions. It's awesome. Yeah, that, that was such a fun episode. And you're right. Like it was completely accidental how it came out. And even yeah. though I kind of had in my mind going into the episode, like, oh yeah, like asking questions is like a good way to like handle an argument. It became so clear after the first take that we did, what was going wrong on your end. Mm -hmm. And then you, like you stumped me. Like I just, so you guys should watch that if you're having trouble in your debates. And also if you want to see me make a fool of myself trying to act no, like a TRA. you were the best TRA. It was uncanny. It was scary. This girl would do damage as a TRA. Holy shit. I did. We do I not did do want, damage yeah. as a TRA. I remember we talked in about that too. Life. Yeah. yeah, people still reference this like in my, uh, at work, people will be like, oh, we need someone to like, uh, practice like doing the debate for this podcast that the lawyer is going to go on. I was like, oh, Mary Kay, you could be a TRA. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you would be. And then episode eight, we talked to Lauren Adams, lawyer Speaking at Wolf. Speaking of the, the lawyer. Yeah, the Equality Act is a men's civil rights bill. That was a quote from Lauren that she said to us. It was great to have Lauren on because we got to kind of pick her brain a little bit about like just the law, the Equality Act and whatnot. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's a lot of things that even still in the mainstream, people don't really get about the mm -hmm. Equality Act. Like, you know, we've recently discovered that a lot of people don't actually know that the men and women's prisons issue, that that will go national if the Equality Act passes. And we've mm -hmm. actually been, I, I think that since this episode was filmed, we've actually seen a tipping point on this bill because all of the sports stuff like really blew up. And what we've heard is that there were some people who were previously in favor of the Equality Act, but then after learning about that, were not anymore. And I think that the like mainstream conversation is actually starting to shift on this issue. Yeah. So don't think like it might not ever be something that we see like people come out in like a public statement about why they backed out or anything like that. But you know, I think that people should uh, keep in mind that all that behind the scenes work that is done all of the letter writing all like all of that you know trying to educate your lawmakers it does make a difference because mm -hmm. we are sitting here in june and that act still hasn't passed and you know we really thought that they were going to try to pass it during pride and not to you know <laughs> speak too soon there's still a few days left Five in this days. month but they still haven't and we don't think they will at this point again knock on wood but it matters this was the time that I was so passionate about this because like I mentioned, I do have a bit of GC burnout right now. It's not because I don't care about these issues. It's just that I realized I've been thinking about them nonstop every day for over a year. I mean, because it was since before I got canceled that I've been a little obsessive. So, you know, I hope people can understand there's a little bit of burnout there, but it was so important to me to be able to let people know what was wrong with the Equality Act and that we actually, you know, read it. I didn't read the entire thing. Like I, I didn't, it was long. I read the relevant parts and that we were actually able to spread real truth, the truth about it. Now, like you said, there has been a tipping point. A lot more people are talking about it, but it felt like we were really Honestly, it felt like we, I mean, I think we were some of the first just timing wise. We we got in there really fast when Biden, actually with Biden's executive orders, yeah. we made a video like the day of or the day after or something. And yeah. that is very gratifying to me because you had this expert knowledge from Wolf and we really covered that. I think we, that was honestly, maybe that's what I'm most proud of with Identity Crisis is that we covered the Equality Act and the executive orders and we were very thorough. We were very, um, we were very precise and accurate, I think, I hope. And we, um, and I'm proud of that. Yeah. You know, I think there's actually a major lack of, you know, kind of information that's accessible about American politics on these issues and the different bills and laws and stuff. You know, there's been so much writing about the different uh, laws in the UK and that, you know, all their proposed reform acts and all this stuff. Uh, it gets a lot more airtime in the UK than it does here. We have a complete media blackout on this issue essentially. And until honestly, very recently, and even still it's, barely like not comparable um 
And so, yeah, I agree. I think that being able to explain this in an accessible way, obviously that's also part of what Wolf does, but being able to then bring it to our audience here on YouTube and to sort of reach, I think, a broader swath of people with that information is really important. And then episode nine, we did logical fallacies. You know the Kafka trap? Yeah. All the time. All yes. the time I see too. Of it. It's the number one fallacy yeah. I see in the wild now. Me too. It's the one that I learned from doing that, that I now see and identify all the time. Yeah. I love it. I mean, I don't, it's awful, but I love it. Yeah. And then episode 10 was how to question everything without going crazy. See, this, this was like where we're really working through our identity crises <laughs> right before you guys, because yes. we're trying to question everything. We're trying not to go crazy. And it's, it's an interesting process. I know. Don't, don't become a conspiracy said. theorist. Oh, yeah, except that's one for of the things we said. When it's good to. Sometimes yeah. it's good. Sometimes there is a conspiracy, but sometimes it's, it's, you know, and, you know, people called me a conspiracy theorist back when I first started talking about this gender identity stuff. And those mm. people now agree with me. And I mean, not all of them. One person said this. <laughs> but the point is, is, like, yeah, sometimes there is a conspiracy, but also just because you start to like go down this path of questioning things doesn't mean that suddenly we're on flat earth here, folks. Like, right. Right. We're not climb a mountain, people. Look I out. Like, look look, look on the horizon. On the ground. Yeah. Or go on a plane and then see that we're not on a plane. That <laughs> like, too. What? That too. It's not that hard to prove to yourself that we have a round earth, okay? All right. Episode. Then we did. Okay. I've been skipping over bonus episodes, but we did a bonus episode. The mob comes after Jesse Single. Yep. Because one of the bonus episodes I skipped was our executive order one. So, yeah. but um, the Jesse single, then we did the episode 11 was Rob Hoogland and the loudest silence. That was when we talked about, were you silent or were you silent? Silent. Classic. That was fun. That was so, so much fun. Oh my I God. love that we got to bring in Oprah. Well, at least one day. God. That was awesome. And you also interviewed his lawyer on mm -hmm. Crossroads, didn't you? I did. Yes, Rob Hoogland's lawyer, Carrie Lind. But no, the Rob Hoogland case is one of the worst, most egregious cases in this whole gender war. He, I'm sure people who are following know the story, but he went to jail for opposing his daughter's transition because he, the, the judge put a gag order on him and he broke it. To make it, you know, long story short. Yeah. And then we did an episode on the Arkansas bill. I really am proud of that episode as well. Saving kids from medical experimentation. And that's what the bill was. It did go through, which is awesome. So Arkansas yeah. actually was the first state to ban uh, gender transitions, um, treatments on minors, which Don't is awesome. treatments, experimentation. You're right. Okay. Abuse. Yeah, they're not treatment. Yeah, it's not, not treating anything. It's treating gender nonconformity with with lifelong medicalization and that's yeah. untested and not FDA approved yeah. and borderline abusive. Not even borderline. Straight profit abusive. Profit seeking. Profit. Yeah, These sick fucks. This is when we also finally moved to the side by side view, and I gotta say, I love it so much. It's more. so much better. I know that this app is like here's some behind the scenes. Like this app can be annoying for us to use sometimes. It's definitely not as reliable as Zoom, but oh my god, it looks so much better. And like yes. I feel like the uh, old episodes are so hard for me to look at now. Me too, just for a variety of reasons. But also, yeah, if you've seen like glitches on this or fuzziness and blurriness, that's the app. But we do overall like it better because we're in these smaller boxes and we're not widescreen. And you and know, then, part of what I'm hoping to do over our mm -hmm. summer hiatus is actually dig a little bit more into some different tech options for the show so that maybe we can have like a nice view of a word also is reliable and yeah. you so know, we don't have those we'll, glitches. Yeah. So we want to get yeah. the best of both worlds for you guys. I know we're we working really, on it. We want high oh my God. It literally just froze. Are you kidding? me? So that may happen at some point. This is being pranked. Because we're frozen right now. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's fucking hell. Um, oh, my God. There so, you go, kids. Yeah. It's the, the proof is in the pudding. I love that expression because what does it mean? The proof is in the pudding. Does anyone know what that expression means? Literally, like what the proof, what? Okay. I bet that there was a violent murder in the kitchen 
while the pudding was like, you know how it has to like kind of solidify. Mm -hmm. And so they were like solidifying the pudding during this violent murder. For some reason, the refrigerator was open and then like little blood splatters like went into the pudding and then, but then he completely got rid of the body and managed to like scrub the floors and like, you know, totally cleaned it up. So, and like covered it with all kinds of stuff. So you wouldn't see it like with the luminol and everything. And then they like were digging through the trash like trying to find the proof of this murder and then they got an anonymous tip the proof is in the pudding and they were like what and then they tested the pudding and sure enough traces of blood caught the bad guy put him away boom is this drunk mk because i like it (laughs) No, this is, I was literally just listening to a crime junkie right before we went. Got you. So then we did social contagion among teen girls and we got a bit personal and we shared how both of us actually used to self-harm and cut ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that was something we both knew about each other before. For me, I was glad we were able to share that because it's like, yeah, this isn't new that teenage girls do these things. And we know, we know very well, but this one is different because this one is lifelong altering. Yeah. And, you know, I had quite a few people reach out to me after this episode, just like friends, like people in my life who watch the show who said, like, I really resonated with that. And one comment that I thought was really interesting on this episode was a friend who reached out and said, you know, I really resonated with that, too. But she's quite a few years younger than me. And it was kind of surprising that she was in the like self-harm is the like cool new trend phase. And then she was like, was I just on the like cusp of when gender identity hit? I feel like I wasn't in school when that happened. So like, what is the, what explains this like five, seven year gap? And then we were thinking about it. And, you know, my theory, actually, I saw there's there's this account on Twitter called Gender Mapper. And what they do is they put little like pins on Google Maps and show you where all of the gender clinics are in the United States. And what I realized when I saw this, they had one tweet a couple of weeks ago now, maybe, uh, where it showed, it said, this is the area with the most gender clinics in the United States of America. It was my hometown, right along the Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York, like sort of tri-state like corridor there. And it like, you know, my hometown was right in the middle of it. And I was thinking that, you know, I bet that these sort of coastal areas like New York, Philly, New Jersey, and then probably like San Francisco and like you know, LA Maybe and like I'm other California. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And so I bet that like the coastal cities, it, the wave hit there first. And then I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of then like came came in like waves throughout the central U.S. because she was much more towards like the Midwest kind of like central flyover states. And so I was, what this made me think is that what we experienced like in our uh, age range could actually be true for people who were quite a different age than us if they were having these waves hit their cities at different times. And so I think that, you know, even if you're not the same age as us, this could still really resonate with you depending on whether or not it hit your city earlier, if like you're maybe older than us or later if you're younger than us. And I thought that was a really interesting observation on her part. And then we did our series, our two-part series on how to survive cancellation. Do you want to tell about the, um, there was a nice story about that, about someone who watched that and was affected by it. Yeah. So, you know, we don't always get to hear what impact our episodes and, you know, our content makes, but there was one student that actually got in touch with me who was a... I think he's like a sophomore, junior, and he's a detransitioner, actually. And he was getting uh, bullied at his school, essentially, because he was speaking out against gender identity. And he basically got canceled. I mean, he had done things like he put up some stickers, like asking people to, you know, basically telling people to question gender ideology. And um, and he had written about it on some uh, like student forum place. And he got completely canceled. He lost all of his friends. And it just so happened that this was happening at the time that the second part of the episode dropped. And so he was, and he had already been following the show at the time that he was getting canceled. These episodes came out just at the right time for him to really get to like have someone kind of explain to him how to survive cancellation. And, you know, his story, I, you know, I wish I could tell you guys more, but, you know, we're trying to protect his identity because he's still kind of in the thick of it and trying to avoid some of the worst blowback. 
but it I think I really hope that there are people out there who if they've gone through cancellation they know that they're not alone and whether or not they've done what we've done which is like embrace this canceled identity and you know make a new career out of it make a platform out of it or if they've tried to just kind of go back to their normal life and like do what they have to do to sort of get by i hope that you know you're not alone and just knowing that there was at least one person who watched those episodes and knew that they were for them and that we were basically able to support him. And, and, you know, I talked to him a little bit one-on-one -on -one and uh, it was, it was really powerful to hear his story. And, you know, for me, it really resonated. And um, so if you're, if you're out there listening still, you know, hi, I still think of you a lot. And for anyone else who's been canceled, even if it's not the degree that like we were, like you don't have to be fired to be facing some of this blowback of being canceled. It can be sometimes just losing one friend, losing a partner, losing, you know, an opportunity. And, you know, I think that this series is really useful for anyone who's been through that, especially, uh, you know, for young people who are kind of in the midst of building a career, building friendships and stuff. So definitely check it out, especially if that's you. If you know anyone who could use that as a resource, I'm really glad that we made these. These are actually, I think, some of my favorite episodes because to me, it really was the thing that I felt like we could bring to this generation that maybe no one else would tell them, especially from the left, you know. I think there are loads of people out there on the right who maybe would be happy to embrace the, you know, young canceled people, but to have, you know, leftists out there talking about this, I think is really important. I'm glad we did that. Yeah. And I'm so, my hope is that if someone gets canceled and they type into Google, how do I survive this experience of cancellation that they'll see our videos and they'll just see, I think we really showed how much it hurt us to go through. I remember being so nervous to film that because I would have to relive what happened. And it was painful to talk about, but it was kind of like an exorcism because I felt better after. And yeah. we were really raw about it. And we talked about how we rebuilt after. And I think it would have helped me to watch that when I got canceled. And I don't think anything like that was out there. So I hope that I hope that somebody was canceled and found that. <laughs> I, I hope you're all canceled. That, I hope they all got canceled. No. And, you know, Sasha, I, I thought it was really awesome that you did agree to do that. You know, this was actually, I think, one of the first ideas for an episode do. that I wanted to and do. And I was yeah. like, oh, I, I, I'm not ready you because ready it was yet. so raw. It, it hurt. I mean, I a lot of people who watched this watched my cancellation go down. I don't know if you know how much that fucked me up. I mean, it was really, it was really one of the hardest t few weeks ever that I lived through. And, um, you know, like there was one, um, Constantine Kissin once put a comment on one of my tweets and he said, you the human brain isn't designed to think that thousands of people hate you. And they don't, and he said, and they don't. So that's not the case, but I was like, yeah, exactly. It's really, uh, there's something very, very disquieting about it that you can't really be prepared for. So, um, so talking about it was good and we're not alone. And then, of course, that's why we have the Plebity Free Speech Fund, because we want to help support other people who go through it and just sort of generally show people that there is some support for that. And you guys just had an awesome new grantee recipient, didn't yes, you? Yes, we did. We just gave a grant last week, the, the last week of June 2021 to Raquel Rosario Sanchez. And that I'm so proud that we were able to do that. She's such a worthy recipient because just briefly to tell her story, and I interviewed her on Crossroads. You can check that out. It's a, one of my most emotional interviews and um, also terrible lighting back then, but, you know. Um, we learn and we grow. We learn and we learn a lot. And uh, Raquel is a student at University of Bristol in England getting a PhD in, in women and, and gender studies, specifically violence against women, male violence against women. And she has been hounded for several years by TRA activists on campus, and they've absolutely just bullied her constantly. It's this targeted harassment that I don't know how she withstands, but the university did not protect her. They, in fact, came down hard on her subjected her to cross examinations in front of the bully and just basically turned the situation around on her and vict further victimized her. So she's now suing them. And so we gave her a grant to help her because she's just trying to get through her studies and 
sue this university. I'm so glad that you were able to help her because she mm -hmm. really is an inspiration. And you know, something that's interesting is uh, you guys may have heard about these recent Title IX changes that just came down. The uh, Biden administration under the new Ed Secretary Cardona have just created these new policies, basically saying that they were interpreting sex under Title IX in the United States, which is our uh, equal protection and education policy, to include gender identity and sexual orientation, which is mostly bullshit and will probably be bad besides the sexual orientation part. That part's good. Um, but what we're actually thinking at over at Wolf and as you know, a little bit of a spoiler, there might be some sort of resource coming out on this soon. So we think that the way that it's worded could actually give an opportunity for people who are bullied for saying that they don't have a gender identity or don't believe in gender identity, or that they are, for example, a lesbian who is not attracted to males, and that these sorts of things may actually be able to be protected under this new policy. And so people who go through now, obviously Raquel, she's not in the US, so this wouldn't have helped her. But for example, the um, young man that I just mentioned who is being bullied for basically telling people that he's a detransitioner and that he wants to question gender identity, uh, these sorts of things, we think that there's sort of an avenue under these new policies. Uh, so stay tuned for updates on that because I think that we're gonna have some resources coming out that will help people understand ways that these new policies maybe aren't as horrible as they might be cracked up to be for, for those of us who wanna take a stand and are already getting bullied anyways. And then we did the year of kink shaming. That was fun. Yes. We got to kink shame a little bit. I For so long, I felt that I had to be so careful with every word because I had just come through this cancellation. And I was yeah. like, you know, I had people mad at me. I had a lot of people mad at me. And mm -hmm. um, in front of the whole world, you know, like when prior to my cancellation, I was completely low profile. My name is Sasha White. Nothing came up about me when you Googled me. There's like, the first thing is like, there's this erotic author named Sasha. That's her pseudonym, Sasha Way. So that's that's the main thing. But now, after I got that's canceled, it's a, it's a bit of It's me and her. We're in this together. Um, but that's my real name. So like, she needs to back off. Have but you anyways. ever thought about, okay, this is like totally random. I know that there's out there another MK Fane, another Mary Kate Fane. She's younger than me. I think that she's like in college. She plays the volleyball. The two of them like, need to make a with, podcast. I've just, I've wondered, like, I wonder if people look, like, look she her didn't. up and then see my shit and then she gets canceled because of that. Oh, or like, she gets happen. in trouble. And like, I genuinely wonder, like, at first I was pissed when I realized there was another Mary Kate Fane because I thought it was the only one. Mm -hmm. um, and she's quite a bit younger than me, I think. But I think that she's like in the age range where if you tried to say what I was saying, you would be like, done so. So other Mary That's Kate Fane, if you are out there listening to this, I'm sorry if I ruined your life. Like, I swear to God, it's not intentional, but if you want to be friends, we probably should be. So look me up I, and your volleyball scores are sick. And then um, we went from there to, we talked about Valerie Pelletier, another woman fired for being gender critical was episode 17. Yes. So she was another fun recipient. And um, Valerie was fired from a women's shelter in Canada for being gender critical. We've started to almost catch up to the present day with our episodes. We don't have to go through all the most recent ones because hopefully you guys remember if you weren't you know, as drunk as we are right now, you might remember. Um, okay. <laughs> Where, where's your drink? Let's see your progress because mine is empty. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, we did. We did male rapists being transferred to female prisons. We did non-binary craze. We did. Do we call ourselves feminists? That was a contentious one. Oh yeah. We did decline of the ACLU, and then we did Billie Eilish and hypersexualization, and that brings us up to today. One other thing that I wanted to share with people was that um, we, at one point, were invited to a meeting of parents of. ROGD children, rapid onset gender dysphoria children. And we went, we told, we sent them several emails saying, you know, we're not experts, right? And we have never been through this ourselves. And they're like, yeah, we just want to ask you about sort of how to talk about these issues with young people or what you think about that. So we went and talked to these parents and God, it was gut wrenching. I mean, hearing some of their stories and hearing the way their children had rejected them in some cases was heart-wrenching it was so sad and we talked to them and you know i hope we gave some helpful comments we told them a bit about our experiences in terms of like what we talked about before with the self-harm and just what a teenager kind of needs from their parent in that moment 
And we discussed also just what we know from being gender critical about some of these issues. Yeah, that, that was a really interesting experience that, you know, we've never would have had that opportunity if it wasn't for the show. And I was really honored that, like you said, despite us telling them multiple times, we are not qualified to speak about this, that they still wanted to hear from us anyways. And, you know, I can't say what anyone else got out of it, but I got a lot out of it. I learned so much uh, from these parents just hearing about their experiences with their kids. And you're right, it was really heartbreaking. You know, there was one mom who like hasn't spoken to her daughter in years and and she's, you know, basically mutilated herself and, and she's not sure if she'll ever speak to her again. And, you know, I don't like I genuinely don't really have advice for people in these situations, but just to connect with the people going through this, like on the ground, you know, the people who are really impacted. Like we've both been impacted in various ways. You know, our careers were impacted, and in some cases, our friends group were impacted, or you know, we each have different people we know who are impacted in various ways. But I think that this parent-child relationship is something that we're not really, you know, anywhere near experiencing. So that that was very powerful. Um, you know, we've been pretty uh, privileged throughout the course of the show to have a lot of people reach out to us and share their different experiences, the different ways that, you know, they felt like the content was resonating in their life or, or their different views on the issues. And that's been, I think, one of the coolest things about the show so far is being able to hear from all these different people. And I think when you kind of put yourself out there and say, like, here's what I think, then, you know, you get a lot back. And we also got some hate mail. And, you know, we, we had our fair share of nonsense. But most Mostly what we got was people saying that, you know, they really appreciated what we were doing and then sharing their own perspective and stories with us. And, you know, we uh, ultimately, uh, when we first went into the show, we had the idea of making it like an advice column. And then, you know, people would write in with questions and then we would give answers. And we pretty quickly moved away from that when it became clear that people didn't really write us in with questions people wrote us in with like their life stories mm -hmm. and they didn't necessarily want it on air. Like they wanted to just like tell someone, you know? Yeah. And, and that's been really cool. Yeah, it has been. And, you know, I'm sorry if we didn't get back to you because we weren't able to get back to every single person as it grew, we started getting too many um, messages to reply to everyone, but we did appreciate them all. And, we except for the hate mail and the um talking to the parents it was like it's one thing to read their stories in abigail shire's book or articles and stuff like that but to hear them and to see the pain in their eyes and to hear it in their voice was really intense and really powerful i really felt for them and that was that was rough <laughs> yeah it was i mean mm -hmm. i remember when we got off that call i just like went to alex and was like dude yeah like like what do you like I was like I shouldn't have been there you know mm -hmm. but also like I'm glad that I was and, mm -hmm. um you know it's the sort of thing that you just like don't feel qualified for and like I'm right. not qualified for and um yeah that that was a really crazy experience but really good you know to yeah really can connect with some of those parents I think was yeah that was important because that's really you know we we our target audience on this show well, when we started out was young people. And I think that our audience demographics tended to actually skew quite a bit older. And what mm -hmm. we found was a lot of people are struggling to communicate to the young people that they love and, and the people that are in their lives uh, and they see what's happening with younger people and they want to help them. And so quite a bit of our audience was not what we described our target demographic as. And, you know, we had a lot of people write into us throughout the course of the season and say, but I'm not a person in my teens or twenties. Like, can I watch the show? And obviously they didn't let that stop them because they are still here today watching the show and commenting. And, you know, I'm really grateful that you all gave us a chance because I definitely do not feel qualified to give advice or or any sort of guidance to women who have decades more experience dealing with this bullshit than me um but I, i've been really i think honored by the by the general reaction that we've received from people and and i hope that we've helped some people along the way this season i'm looking me forward too. to what we're gonna do next season yes absolutely me too and like you said we started off with this idea of kind of being like the older sisters of the gcs and the turfs and then we saw like okay, maybe that's not exactly the need. The need is more just to have these conversations with anybody. So I think we're kind of 
you know, we might rebrand and leave out our wording about the age group because that's not as important to us. We just want to talk to people regardless of age. We're not ageists. We're just transphobes. Um, <laughs> We are going to be back and I'm going to continue um, videos on plebity, but it's going to be in a little bit different direction. I'm going to start interviewing more people about free speech and other issues. Um, and I also have my new show, The Underground with Nassim Batani, where we're covering other issues besides GC. So check that out if you're interested. We kind of, you know, because GC isn't controversial enough, we decided to jump right into Israel and Palestine and just stir up some shit with that. So you can check out our episode on Israel and Palestine. And we have other episodes as well. Um, determined and to get then, canceled on every front. Yeah, that would be ideal. That would be the best. <laughs> Sasha needs this. Yeah, no just problem. follow the shirt. Thank you, everyone, for watching this season, for joining us on this journey. Like we said, we are going to be taking a break over the summer, but then we will be back. And stay tuned in the feed because we may have some surprise episodes for you this summer. <laughs> All right, everyone. So that brings us to the end of this episode and to the beginning of our hiatus. We are going to have a lot of fun this summer. We do have secret plans that we're not going to tell you about quite yet, but you're going to like them. Yeah, so everybody take care. Enjoy your summer. Don't let this stuff get you down. I know how much it sucks when you're working your normal job or going to school and then you you're surrounded by crazy people you can't talk about this stuff and you crave the content but for us we've started doing it in our day-to-day -day life so it the whole dynamic changes you feel less desperate you feel more sated in your need to talk about it and then you do need to take a break that's what's happening with us so we'll still be on twitter and everything you can find us and you can watch all of our back episodes see you this summer